Everybody. Uh, unless you've been living under a pile of yarn for the last few days, you've probably heard about Pokemon Go, the new augmented reality game that like the whole world seems to be playing. <laughs> and if you're not playing it, chances are you know somebody who is. So I thought today on the show, we would help all of our little Pokemon catchers by making this really cute Pokeball keychain or dust plug for your phone. I've already taken the liberty of making several of them. <laughs> Because they do whip up pretty quickly, and they're really fun, and they're super cute. And you know, you can always use an extra Pokeball to catch that one last Pokemon. <laughs> so on the show today, that's what we're going to do. And it's a slightly different kind of pattern. We're going to be using embroidery floss and a very small hook. So a little bit different than what we usually do, but I'm going to take you through it nice and slow. Oh, and there's a free pattern for this little Pokeball available on our website, so you can head over there, download the pattern, come on back, and come have some fun catching some Pokemons with our little new Pokeball charm. So, grab your stuff, grab that pattern, and let's get started! <laughs> In order to make our Pokeball charm, we want to make it as small and charm-like as possible. So you can use a fine yarn, a fine weight yarn, like a sock weight, size one. You can use a crochet thread, size three, sort of like we did for our uh, barefoot sandals. Or you can do what I'm doing and try embroidery floss. Embroidery floss has nice rich colors. It's thin, it undoes easily, and you can use it with a size two millimeter hook, which is what I'm using today. You can use a size two millimeter with the other two kinds of yarns or threads I described. Um, and you can choose whichever one you've got available to you. They'll all work. You just want to make sure you've got red, white, and black. You need a pair of scissors, a needle, which will have an eye big enough to accommodate the thread or yarn you're using, and a plug. So you can get a dust plug uh, on the internet. You can buy them off of Amazon, um, or you can do what I do and just grab an old pair of earbuds that I wasn't using anymore, snipped the cord, tied it down with some electrical tape, and that is my dust plug charm base for my phone. And once you've got all that, we can get started. We're going to begin with our color red. So grab your red, and we're going to start with a, a cinch circle. <laughs> cinch circle to begin. Into that cinch circle, you're going to work six single crochets. So once you've got your cinch circle made, you're going to work six single crochets into it. And remember, we are working with a small hook and very fine thread or yarn. So you want to be patient with yourself because this is small work and sometimes it might feel a little clumsy in our fingers, but if you're patient and you take your time, it'll work out just fine. All right, once you've got your six single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab that little short tail and pull it tightly shut. And remember, this is really, really small work, so it's going to feel and look a little stranger than normal. <laughs> Find the first single crochet you made, right back here. Slip your hook into it. And into that single crochet, you're going to work two more. Now, if you're the type that has difficulty seeing where your starting point is, you can pause for a moment, grab a safety pin, and just either slip it into your last stitch or slip it into that first one that you've got your your um, your hook back into, and that can stay as a marker until you don't need it any longer. But if you can sort of see where you start and stop your your um, circles, then you don't need one. So into that first stitch, 
and this is always a bit tight, you want to work two single crochets. So there's one, get it back in there, and there's two. Okay, that's the tightest stitch done. <laughs> You're going to work two single crochet into each of the rest of those five stitches and you will have a stitch count of 12 at the end of row two. The end of row two should look something like this. You'll have 12 stitches in total and I'm just working over my short tail but if you find that difficult you can just kind of keep holding it to the back and then it'll end up being buried in the middle of your pokeball. Row three, we're going to keep working in the round. You're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch. And one single crochet into the stitch after that. So the pattern around for row three is two single crochets, one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet. At the end of row three, you will have 18 stitches. All right, at the end of row three, you should have 18 stitches all the way around. And now row four, you're just going to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So you're still going to have a stitch count of 18 at the end of row four. So I know it's a bit tricky, Take your time, <laughs> try not to get frustrated, and uh, we will see you at the end of row four. All right, I'm just coming up to the end of row four. Here's where my row one turns into my row two. You see that little bump right there? So I wanna make sure that my last stitch of row four is in line with that little bump spot, because I want to finish a nice even semicircle here. So that's where I'm going to even up my stitches to. It doesn't change my stitch count. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. So we're done with the red. You don't need very much tail. Grab it, pull it back through your loop. Give it a nice tight tug. If you're dealing with um, this nice slippery floss like I am, you might find that it wants to unravel on you. So you will probably want to work over this tail if you're comfortable doing that. If not, grab your little needle and take a moment to weave it in to some of the backs of some of those stitches. That will just lock it in place and it won't unravel on you. We don't want our Pokemon to escape after all. <laughs> okay, we're gonna switch to black. So grab your black floss or your black thread uh, or yarn, whichever you're using. We're going to make a slip knot. There you go. And we're going to join our yarn or our thread right into the stitch directly next to where we fastened off. So slip it right in there and we're going to join with a single crochet. So I'm going to hold down both of my little tails and try to work over them. Pick up a loop. It's hard to see because I've got black, but there's the two loops on my hook. And then single crochet. All right, black's really easy. You're going to do two solid rows of just black, single crochet, one stitch per stitch, so at the end of rows five and six, you'll still have 18 stitches per row. This is uh, just crocheting straight. We're just putting in that nice little black strap or black stripe that runs around the outside of the Pokeball. So two rows of black. You want to finish your second row right on top of where you started. Since it's a color change, it'll be pretty easy to see. And I will see you at the end of row six. Okay, I finished my second row. You'll notice that there's this little sort of dippity-doo area <laughs> where my sort of row um, six kind of went over top of row five. So I'm just gonna even up by adding an extra single crochet there, just so that black strap is two rows deep. And then I'm going to slip stitch 
into the stitch next to that and fasten off. And don't worry about this little area that looks a bit wonky because that's actually where we're going to put our pokey button um, or the button for our ball or the locking mechanism I guess it is. There, so I've just fastened off. Same thing if you feel like you think it's going to want to unravel on you and you're not comfortable working over top of your tails like, like I like to do, then take a moment, grab your needle and just weave it in behind some of those stitches there on the inside just so it locks it in place and it doesn't go anywhere. All right, we're on to the white now. Take your white thread or yarn, make a slip knot. We're going to join this color just before where we slip stitch. Now I know it's a bit tricky to see because this is black, but right where you sort of fastened off, go to the stitch just before that one. That'll kind of help keep all of our color changing in the same little space. And then we'll cover it up with the lock. Join with a single crochet. Yep. And you're going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around for two rows. So rows seven and eight are going to be single crochet in each stitch all the way around. Each sort of row will have 18 stitches in it just like the rows before. So two straight rows of single crochet with your new white color. I'll see you at the end of row eight. All right, at the end of row eight, you should have completed two straight rows of single crochet in white. And now we're going to start to decrease. So at this point, you may want to consider adding a little bit of stuffing. And I'm literally just using a tiny bit of balled up white yarn from some spare ball I had lying around. You barely need any stuffing at all. Um, you can put a little bit in now. If you find it's tricky to kind of hold your project and keep the stuffing in, then you can hold off for another row. But I find myself it's a little easier to kind of hold it and control it. And this allows me to kind of use my finger as a bit of a brace when I'm trying to pick up a stitch. <laughs> but you can do whatever's comfortable for you. Um, and remember, we're still not speeding along. So now we're going to start to uh, decrease so we want to single crochet two of these little stitches together so remember you pick up a loop in the next stitch and then pick up a loop in the stitch next to that and I think you can see it a little bit better against my finger so now you've got three loops on your hook wrap your yarn around your hook and pull it back through everything that is single crochet two together so you're going to single crochet once into the next stitch and then single crochet two together. So all the way around you're going to work single crochet two together, single crochet into the next stitch. So you're going to decrease from a current stitch count of 18 to a stitch count of 12. Take your time, no rushing necessary. <laughs> you want your little ball to be ball-like <laughs> as much as possible. And like I say, if you want to start adding stuffing now, you can go ahead and do that. All right, at the end of row nine, you should be down to 12 single crochets. Your pattern was single crochet two together, single crochet one, single crochet two together, single crochet one, all the way around. Uh, you can definitely start adding your stuffing now. And we're continuing to decrease, so I'm just gonna try and cram as much of this white yarn in here as I possibly can. <laughs> the next row, so row 10, is single crochet two together all the way around. So we are now going from a stitch count of 12 all the way back down to six. Six was the amount or the stitch count that we started with. So deep breath, this might be the toughest row yet. You're going to single crochet two together as carefully as you can all the way around, trying to keep your stuffing in there at the same time. <laughs> If you get halfway through this row and you still haven't put any stuffing in, you definitely want to add it before you finish because it'll make for a space that's just about too small to really work in. So, like I say, just take your time. I know it's a little bit odd working in the smaller, um, the smaller, well, I guess the smaller everything, the smaller scale, uh, but it's very much worth the effort <laughs> when you're done. So. so, two together all the way around. You're going to go from 12 to 6. Make sure you add your stuffing and we are almost done this ball part of our pokeball. Okay, 
we're at the end of row 10. You should have six stitches left all the way around. If you're one off or one over, don't worry. What you want is to have a little ball. So you can sort of squish it around. If you feel it needs a little bit more stuffing, you can try and stuff a little bit more into that opening. But if you're ready to close it up, let's do it. So we're going to slip stitch around the posts. This is much easier than trying to sort of single crochet any two together in this manner. You're going to slip your hook in and then out and pick up the post. So see that? There's the top of the stitches, there's the post. And you're just going to slip stitch. So wrap and pull back through everything. Make sure you take your time. And then you're going to do it again. You're going to work around every single post of the previous row until that opening closes. So if it takes you all six, fine. If it only takes you four, fine. If you need a little bit more than six, you can kind of keep going around and around in circles. But this is a nice flattening way to close up that space. So I've done three and mine's pretty much already closed. I'm going to uh, just do one more. There we go. And that's that's it for me. So I'm going to snip off a fairly decent amount of yarn, or thread in this case, because I want to be able to weave it in several times and then tuck the rest of it into the body of my Pokeball because I don't want it to unravel on me. So I'm going to tie, sort of pull that nice and tightly, grab my little needle, thread it up, and then weave it around back and forth a couple times, and then poke the rest of it back into the ball. And that is the ball portion of our Pokeball complete. So the next part we're going to do is the locking mechanism on our Pokeball. So we're going to grab our black thread, or our black yarn, whichever you're using. We're going to make a cinch circle. And into that cinch circle, we're going to work 10 single crochets. So this one's a little easier to manage than that first one we made. 10 single crochets into your cinch circle. Count them up and I'll see you at the end. All right, there is my 10 single crochets in my little cinch circle. I'm going to grab the short tail, pull it as tightly as I can, there will be a space, more or less, in the middle. If you can sort of see that. It's very, very small. If you have a slightly bigger one, don't worry because your white circle is going to cover it. We're going to finish it now by joining to the first single crochet we made with a slip stitch. There we go. That's it. Snip a fairly long tail because you're going to want to sew down your uh, lock onto your pokeball with this particular thread. Don't worry about the short tail. If yours is a sesh, is sort of really really long then you can snip it to about a, an inch or two. But you're actually going to use that to help anchor it on your pokeball before you start to sew it down. So that's the black part of the lock done. Now we're going to do something similar with the white. You're going to make a cinch circle and this is really going to challenge your fingertips. <laughs> You're going to make a four single crochet cinch circle. So you make your cinch circle, grab out your little tail, and work four single crochets into this little tiny circle. Okay, there's four. One, two, three, four. I'm going to pull my short tail, which isn't so short anymore. I'm going to reach all the way back to that first single crochet I made. Ooh, this is going to be tricky. This one's always a bit tight. Drill my, in <laughs> my hook through it. There, haha. <laughs> and join with a slip stitch. Try not to confuse your tails <laughs> like I am right now. <laughs> there. Okay, there we go. Now, what you've done is made a very small little tiny circle, and it might not look very circular, but you can sort of squish it and pull it into a circular fashion. Same thing, you want to cut a fairly decent length of thread, because you want to sew this white part of the button onto the black part of the button. Okay, you're going to take that tiny little white circle you made, pick up your black circle, and plunk it on top. 
So you can thread up that long tail and start sewing it right on top of your circle. So I'm going to try and keep all of my stitches along the inside edge of all the little stitches because I want to try and keep my hands on it. <laughs> I want to have, well it looks like this, I want to have the the white circle stay just inside the frame of the black circle. So you can do that by holding it in place, coming back up through from the behind, up through the white circle, and every time you go to go back down, make sure you're going in under the, the edge. So you don't want to go over top or split that um, single crochet stitch in half. And that will keep sort of the frame of the black around the outside of the white. It'll look nice and neat and tidy. And if you want to get that little white tail out of the way, you can either thread it up with your needle and pull it down, or you can just grab your crochet hook and go up through the middle of your black button, grab it and pull it back down through the middle, because that can just stay to the back. All right, so finish sewing your white button onto your black button, and then we'll move along. Once you're finished sewing the white part down onto the black part, and you can see that there's that nice sort of framing that happens, pull everything to the back, both your white strings, and then you can knot them. So I'm going to knot them both together, and that will help keep it from unraveling on me. And then you can trim these. Don't trim them down too, too small, because you do want to pull a little bit of it into the actual Pokeball, but you don't want them so long that they're in your way. So we can go ahead and give them a little trim. Great. Now, take your Pokeball, find that spot on the ball where you were sort of changing colors, and you can just plunk your button right down on top of it. I'm going to take my hook, stick it through very gently between a couple stitches on the back of my Pokeball, and work it all the way out to about the middle of that area. And then this is where I said you kind of want these little these little strings. I'm going to pull them back through the ball. Once you've pulled all those little anchoring threads back into the ball, and you can pull them all the way through and then <clears throat> work them back in if you have to, that will kind of help keep it in place while you work on sewing it down. So you can thread up the long tail that's left and try to keep it in place with your thumb. And then like so many other little amigurumi projects we do, you're just going to pick up a tiny little part of a stitch on the ball and then up through the black part, only the black frame, try not to get the white part of your locking mechanism and then do it again. So pause every so often to make sure it hasn't shifted on you and you still like where it's sitting. Pick up a little piece of another stitch. Oops, I've come undone here. I'll get it put together first. Thread yourself back up if you've come undone and then just slowly work your way all the way around your entire lock, making sure that it's securely attached to your Pokeball and it's nicely centered on that black strap. And I'll see you at the end. Once you've finished sewing all the way around your little locking mechanism, make sure you give it a nice squish to keep your ball in shape. Pull your yarn all the way through to the back, through the black strap, and then you can weave it back and forth through some of the stitches back here. And it shouldn't show because it's A, the same color, and B, it's very, very small. So weave it back and forth a few times just to make sure that it's locked into place. And then you can stuff what's left into the ball or trim it off. All that's left to do now is cut yourself a small length of red thread, thread it up in your needle. You want to pass it underneath the first row or the first round where you started. Try not to pull it all the way through. And then knot your ends together and your charm is finished. 
lucky ball charm. <laughs> you can put them on your keychains or put them on a desk plug and carry them with you everywhere. And for those of you who stuck around to the end of the tutorial, thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> you can upsize this pattern into a Pokeball toy if you like. Just use worsted weight or chunky weight yarn in a four or a five and a 5.5 millimeter hook and it upsizes exactly like this and you can make a bowl full and never run out of Pokeballs. <laughs> and that's it. Until next week, everybody, stay safe, have fun, and have a very, very crafty week. And if you'll excuse me, I now have to go find some Pokemon. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>